Howdy, this is Chris. I uh, did some work last night getting a static mesh uh, socketing system to uh, up and running for my modular magic weapon system uh, for my VR side project. And it was a little bit of a rigmarole, so I thought I might share for other people who may have been trying to do something similar who may have run into some frustrating bits. <laughs> um, the goal here is to be able to create a modular weapon system where you just need to add the correct sockets to static meshes and they will interact with the system appropriately and snap into the right spots and um, alleviate some of the inconsistencies that you'll get with stuff off the asset store uh, with the pivots all over the place and I'd rather not have to FBX everything into Blender and then <laughs> FBX it back in just to have some things snap into place with sockets. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. So uh, for the setup, all I did was opened up a couple of these meshes from the over 9,000 swords packs. Now, its pivots are kind of all over the place. And so uh, it was actually kind of a good example. It, it's all made to go with each other and only with each other. You can't have a longer handle with their setup. You can't have, you know, a thicker cross guard or, you know, some of the things that I know that I'm going to want to have in the future. So, um, we'll go ahead and start out with the hilt, the handle. Um, so I'm making a VR game, so I went ahead and made a grip socket to use to kind of zero the mesh out from where I want you to grab it. And since everything else attaches to this mesh, um, it should all come along for the ride. So I've got this handle attachment socket down here. That's to attach a pommel to, or, you know, on some weapons, maybe like a dangling chain or something like that. Um, and then we have our handle socket here, and this is what our sword cross guard is going to get attached to. Um, for an axe or a hammer, that'll be where the haft will go. Uh, for bows, that'll be the limbs. Uh, bows will likely be set up a little differently. Um, Here's our pommel again. It's it's kind of down here in negative space, but I added this socket with the same name uh, so it can attach. There's our cross guard, and it's got a handle socket and a damage socket. Pardon my zooming. Um, so this is where it's going to attach onto the handle, and this is where the, the sword blade is going to attach onto it. Um, and uh, Here's the sword blade. It just has a damage socket, and again, it's floating way up here, so um, it would be a pain in the butt to go edit all these files. But adding a socket is super easy. Just boop, put it into place, You're good to go. So now that you've seen those, we'll go ahead and open up Blueprint here and uh, go to my construction script, and so. Um, the first thing I do is kind of zero that handle mesh out to its grip socket. And um, I'll get into this function in a second. This is a custom function that's kind of doing the meat of the work here. Afterwards, I attach the um, cross guard, which right now I'm calling the neck for lack of a better name, um, to the handle via the handle socket. We're going to snap all to it and will simulate a box. That's going to make it simulate with it. Um, one thing I also have is on handle mesh here. It's set to simulate physics and um, the um, other meshes are not. They are going to come along for the ride since they're attached to this guy. Um, they're also parented to it. I'm not sure if that's actually necessary, but might as well. <laughs> um, so after we attach the neck to the handle and the socket, we're going to zero its mesh position out based on its handle socket. 
and I'll show you that in a second. So we do the same with the pommel, and the sword blade or damage mesh gets uh, attached to the neck mesh via the damage socket, and we do it zero it out again. So if I don't uh, zero it out, I'll kind of show you what goes on here. So here's the uh, uh, sword. If I just parent and socket them, they're popped all apart because they're parenting and they have that offset in world space and trying to figure out how to get you know everything set up to, to work like that would be kind of a nightmare um, and also a lot of time that I don't want to spend so uh, let's come back in here and get my things set back up alright compile looks good so now let's get into the meat and bones of this which is this function here uh, we bring in a mesh and a socket name and I'm not sure if it's important but I do have the uh, Come on, man. Uh, pass by reference selected on that. So the first thing we do is a little bit of validation and some caching some local variables. So we grab the name and we store a local name. And uh, we check to make sure the mesh is valid. If it is, we store a local mesh. If it's not valid or we don't have the attachment point, we go ahead and bail early. Now, right now, this function is returning a transform. If I bailed early, I returned like a zero transform. Um, I'm not sure this is actually going to be useful. I'm probably going to get rid of that. Um, and I also return the transform success or not. So after we get the mesh, let's go through and make sure that the socket name we're looking for exists in the sockets that the mesh has. Um, right, and that bails out as well. And here is uh, the meat and potatoes of this. Um, we're going to get the sockets transform in component space. And after that, um, we're also going to get the relative transform of the, of, the, of the mesh. Now, that's going to get it in its parent space. And so its parent is that socket that we attached it to. Okay. And so what we're doing here is we're getting the socket of this mesh relative to this in the space of the socket that the mesh is parented to and then uh, I store that in the local variable that's not needed but um, in case I want to do more stuff with it later um, uh, I wanted to have it and so we set our relative transform with that new transform uh, on the mesh and return out with a success um, this was the bit that took me a while to get figured out. I'm uh, still a little bit new to Unreal 4. I used Unreal 3 a long time ago. <laughs> um, and I'm not a matrix transform wizard. Um, though I have been working on it. And so um, I had quite a few ill-fated attempts before I got here uh, last night. And so... Uh, this has been working pretty good, as you can see. And uh, for a little bit of extra goodies, now bear with me on this one. The uh, uh, well, actually before that, I'm gonna talk about kind of where I want to take this. I think I'm probably gonna make it so that I wrap these two pieces pieces of a uh, kit into a single function as well, where I just take a parent mesh and a child mesh, and it loops over the sockets within each mesh and finds the first common socket name and uh, uses that socket to do the uh, parenting and the zeroing. And um, that will make this, I think, a little... And then I'll, I'll turn that into a, a generic blueprint function, I think, um, that will take either static meshes or skeletal meshes. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and come out here. And uh, let's see if I can capture a little bit of uh, VR here. 